So back when I started playing guitar, about 15 or 16 or 17 years ago, whenever it was, there weren't that many options out there for people looking for a budget-friendly, great sounding, great looking, great playing acoustic. I remember going to Guitar Center with my parents early on and there not being a whole lot to choose from in that particular segment of the guitar market. Now, since I was a beginner, the budget acoustic world has grown quite a bit. There's new brands out there. Old brands have brought in new models. It seems to be a really fast growing and popular segment in the market. So I thought it would be worth making a video checking out some of the options in this budget acoustic range. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have ourselves a little shootout today. So over the past several weeks, I reached out to a few different guitar brands and had them send me some of their budget acoustic guitars to check out. And in today's episode of Gear Talk, we're gonna do a budget acoustic shootout. Pit them head to head against one another, do some strumming stuff, some finger picking stuff, talk about the good stuff, the bad stuff, figure out who each one of these guitars are for, and I'm gonna pick my favorite out of this bunch. Now, if you want any more information about the guitars I'm featuring in today's video, check out the links in the description box down below. Some of those are affiliate links, which means if you buy through that, I earn a small commission, which really helps me out in making these videos. Also, I'm giving these guitars away. You can enter the giveaway in the link in the description box down below. Also, don't forget Sunday, August 9th, 2020, we have Backstage Live episode two happening here in this room. We're in the live room right now. I've got my band coming. We've got our first guest artist coming on the show. I'm incredibly excited. If you missed episode one, you can check it out here and uh, don't miss the second one. It's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, with all that out of the way, let's jump in and take a look at these four guitars. Now for the shootout, I was intentional about picking the guitars and I wanted them to all be pretty similar. So they all have a similar wood combination. They are all a dreadnought shape. And I went and asked you guys on Instagram what you thought a good budget guitar price was and everyone said around the $500 mark. So these four guitars come in right around that. Some are below 500, some are above 500, but they're all within that ballpark. The other thing I did was change the strings to all the same strings. Strings. We're running to Dario 8020 Phosphor Bronze Light Gauge Strings. Those are my string of choice for all my personal acoustics. And so that's what we are running on all these today, just to kind of even the playing field. Now keep in mind that this video is in no way a look at the entire budget acoustic guitar market. These are just four options that I picked that I thought would be pretty representative of what was out there. These are four that I would be interested in buying if I was in the market for an acoustic like this. Now, another similarity between these guitars is they all have some kind of pickup system in it. Now, if you're new to guitar, basically this allows you to plug your acoustic guitar into some kind of PA or amplification device to make it louder, or you can record at home without a microphone. So we are gonna be testing out each of the pickup systems in the guitars, and we're also gonna be miking them. I'm miking them with a pair of Earthworks SR25, so you should get a nice stereo image. I would encourage you to listen to this video with headphones on. And I'm gonna keep my recording chain super simple. No added EQ, compression, or anything. It's just gonna be the mics and the DI from the guitar itself that you're hearing. So now that you know all that, let's jump in and take a closer look at each of these guitars individually. <laughs> Starting with the orange wood. This is an orange wood echo live dreadnought shape, solid Sitka spruce top, layered Palfero back and sides with mahogany neck, and it comes with a Fishman pickup system. This is their Flex EQ pickup system. So it's got a built in tuner and some EQ controls and the quarter inch output here on the back. This one retails for right around the $400 range. It's $395 US at the time of making this video, and it comes with a padded gig bag, which is a pretty nice touch. All right, next up we've got the Epiphone Hummingbird Pro. It is their dreadnought shape. It's got a solid spruce top, mahogany back and sides. The Fishman pickup in this is a sonotone, so it's a different pickup than the orange wood has. Uh, but this one also comes with the Grover kidney bean tuners, which is a nice touch. This one retails for 369 US, but it doesn't come with any kind of gig bag or hard case. I believe that's an extra feature. This one just came in the box, so something to consider there. Then from Fender, we've got the CD140 SCE. Uh, incredibly catchy name, but like the other guitars so far, we've got a solid spruce top. Then we have an Ovenc call, Ovenc call, 
Oven call. Oven call. Oven call. Has a laminated oven call back in sides. This one has a pickup as well. This is from Fishman and this is the Presis. Uh, pickup system so you can see it's up here. You've got some controls That's actually something I'm really excited to check out between these guitars is the different pickups because I think they're all gonna sound quite a bit different. This one retails for 439 US and it comes with a hard case and a pretty nice hard case at that. I probably wouldn't fly with it but this has definitely got the nicest case out of the four guitars featured today. And finally from Walden we've got the D550E. Now this is a pretty new model for them which is why I asked them to send it to me and it's actually got some interesting features that it doesn't share with any of the other guitars in the shootout. But it's got a solid spruce top, mahogany back and sides, plus their own Walden specific pickup system. I'll be interested to see how this one compares to the Fishman's. But this guitar has got two features that I think are pretty unique. First of all, the bracing. I've never seen bracing like this on an acoustic guitar. They've essentially lightened it up with some weight relief in an effort to try and lighten up the top of the guitar and make it more responsive. And then inside the neck, they've got some fiberglass reinforced rods to help keep the neck more stable through seasonal change. If you're new to guitars, you might not know that Guitars, especially acoustics, are subject to quite a bit of change as the seasons and the weather and the humidity and temperatures change. So you may have your guitar set up in the fall, but as you move through winter, spring, and summer, the guitar is going to change. Your action is gonna change, the playability is gonna change. And so Walden is trying to offset that with uh, some reinforcement in the neck. Seems like a pretty cool option. This one is the most expensive of the four, retailing at $600 US. So we'll see how it stacks up against the cheaper options, but it does come with a padded gig bag.
All right, so I just got done listening back to the recordings that we just put down, and I have a few thoughts on these guitars. Starting with the orange wood, or orange wood. My wife makes fun of the way I say orange. What are you talking about? Orange wood, orange wood. Orange. Orange wood. Orange. That feels wrong. It's spelled with an O. Orange wood. No. Anyway, the orange wood. <laughs> God, now I can't even say it. All right, so the first guitar, this one. Uh, I have to admit, I'm pretty impressed with what they've been able to pull off with this guitar. Out of everything I played, I felt that this was the most balanced. It has plenty of low end and plenty of top end. It is lacking a little bit in the mid range, but if you're the type of person that's going to be singing or using this uh, on a gig, a church gig, or, or some kind of session where you're singing and playing at the same time, that's actually a good thing because you want the mid scooped out of the guitar so that your voice can kind of rest in there in the guitar and your vocals aren't really fighting one another. In terms of playability, this orange wood is great. It's got a nice medium profile neck. It's not overpowering. It's not too thick um, and it's not too thin. There was one guitar where the neck was a little too thin for me. We'll get to that in a second. Also, I think this thing looks way more expensive than it actually is. I mean, they did a really good job of classing this guitar up. It does come with a pick guard if you want to throw a pick guard on there as well. And to me, this had the best electronics out of all of the guitars. You can actually change your different EQ profiles here with this Fishman system to kind of emulate different mic'd up guitar sounds. It has plenty of output. The built-in tuner is pretty easy to read and it was relatively accurate. I didn't have to go to a headstock tuner or use my phone when I was using this one. And it looks nice and clean. I mean, check that out. It's not bulky or in your face at all. It's just nice and low key. Then the Epiphone Hummingbird Pro. This is by far my favorite looking guitar. If you're after a guitar that's got a cool look and a cool vibe, I mean, this is hard to beat. The burst looks great and it's definitely the most vintage looking and vintage feeling and I think vintage sounding guitar out of all of the four. This one lacks a lot of low end response that the Orange Wood and the Walden had and it's a lot more mid range focus. So if you are the type of person that's gonna be singing with this guitar, I would probably stay away from something like this Hummingbird Pro. Now to me, this one worked much better when you were playing softer. I'm a pretty heavy handed guitar player, especially on acoustic and I think I overpowered this one a little bit. It didn't really stand up to the heavy strumming like the other guitars did. But if you're more of a finger style player or a light picker, I think this one is not a bad option. It's also the cheapest guitar in the lineup. And I think for how much it is and what it is, it's a pretty good sounding guitar. It's not the best sounding guitar by any means in this lineup. Now to me, the pickup system, it's just kind of standard plug-in acoustic piezo sound. It's not really anything to write home about. It is cool that for that price you can amplify it, but it honestly doesn't sound all that great. I will say though, playability, this one felt the most comfortable to me. I like bigger necks. I like chunkier necks. And this one has one of the chunkiest necks of the four that I tested. So for me, I liked the playability, but that's a subjective thing. It's gonna depend on who you are as a player and the size of your hands and all that kind of stuff. So if you're looking for something that's more vintage inspired and has a really great look, it's gonna look good in your home or in your room, whatever something like the hummingbird is a cool option i don't think it's the best sounding option out there but if you're not really concerned with that you just want a cool guitar that you're gonna enjoy playing maybe this is the one and then the fender now this one was kind of interesting to me because it sort of does a little bit of everything. It's a good strummer, it's a good finger style guitar. Having this cutaway lets you access the upper frets a little bit easier if that's something you're interested in. Overall, the tone was good. I didn't blow me away. It was exactly what I would have expected from a guitar like this in this price range. It's the old standby, if you will. When I was growing up, my neighbor across the street who got into guitar around the same time I did had a Fender acoustic very similar to this one. And uh, honestly, it sounds exactly like I remember his sounding 
16 years ago or, or however long ago that was. The pickup in this one sounds really good. Much better than the Epiphone. Not as good as the orange wood. This is more of a standard kind of old school acoustic guitar pickup, but it has a really great tuner function built in that's easy to read and pretty accurate. Again, with this one, I didn't have to pull out a headstock tuner or an app as well. The built-in tuner there was great. And you get a two-band EQ with this, a bass control and a treble control, which is a really nice thing to have, especially if you're gonna be playing this live. You might deal with some feedback issues that you could help alleviate with the EQ control by rolling out some of that low end. It's not a perfect fix, but it's something that's nice to have if you are gonna be gigging with it. Now for me, playability wise, this was my least favorite of the group because it has the thinnest neck profile. I actually felt pretty uncomfortable on this guitar. But again, that's a completely subjective thing. That's just me and my hands and what I like in a guitar. If you're a smaller player, someone with smaller hands, you would probably prefer this neck profile over the other two that we just talked about. Overall, I think it's a good option for the price. Don't forget, this one has a great hard case that comes with it. If you are on a budget and you're looking to get a guitar, the case is something to consider. If you're gonna be traveling or going to gigs or friends' houses or rehearsals or take it camping, you're gonna want a decent case or gig bag to go with it, and this by far has the best case out of all of them. It's a really solid hard shell case. And then finally, the Walden. Now, this is by far the most expensive guitar in the comparison but I'm not totally sure that it was the best. I do think it sounded the best, but again, not by much. That orange wood was hard to beat. I think this is the best option and the most versatile option for someone who is both a heavy strummer like me and someone who wants to do more finger style playing as well. Now, keep in mind, these are all dreadnoughts, okay? So they're not really designed for light finger style stuff like an OM body shape would be, but it's not Nice to know something like this is versatile enough to kind of cover all those bases. Now their pickup system in this is actually pretty good. I wasn't sure about it at first, but I like the functionality here. You get a three band EQ, so you can control your bass, middle, treble, and you can control the notch filtering for the mid range. And that's extremely helpful when you're playing this guitar live and you're gonna run into feedback issues. You can dial in what frequency is feeding back on your guitar and pull it out, which is a really cool feature. Also, this one has the best tuner built in. It's like a miniature Boss TU3 built into your guitar. Overall, for $600, this is a solid guitar. And at that price, you're starting to get into some of the entry-level Martin and Taylor territory. And I think this would actually hold its own against any of the Taylor 110s or 114s or anything Martin has to offer in this price point. It's definitely not the best guitar to look at. It's pretty bland, or I guess you could say it's safe. But if you're looking for a great sounding guitar that's pretty versatile and has a great pickup in it for the price, I think the Walden is a good option. So of these four, if I was buying one, what would I buy? For me, it's no question, it's the orange wood. At $400, this is a seriously impressive guitar. It's a great all around budget option. I mean, even for advanced and pro players, I, I would, point somebody at this. If you want a budget option to travel with or take around on the road, something you're not gonna be really concerned about and you can leave your super nice high-end vintage guitars at home, this is a really cool option for that. And for someone that's just starting out, I mean, it looks beautiful. The fit and finish on it is really good. It came out of the box with a great setup and a decent set of strings and it by far has the best pickup out of all of the four guitars that I tested. So for me, it ticks all the boxes. It sounds good, it's nice and balanced, it plays well, it's got a good pickup system, good features, it looks great, and it's the right price. So. There you go, that's the budget acoustic shootout. Let me know which guitar was your favorite in the comments section down below and let me know what I missed. Surely there's more options than just these four out there, so I wanna know what I should check out next. If you like this video, let me know. Maybe we can turn this into a series, the next shootout. What do you wanna see? Let me know in the comments section. Don't forget to enter in the giveaway for these guitars down below and also check out the green room while you're down there as well. One of these guitars is gonna go to a green room member. So be sure to check that out. Also, don't forget August 9th, 2020, we have the next backstage live show happening here 
in this home studio. It's gonna be awesome. I can't wait for that show. We've got a lot of really cool stuff planned. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. My name is Rhett Scholl. Thank you so much for watching and remember there is no plan B.